So this is my newest toy. It's a homemade Wimshurst electrostatic generator. I created it for my physics students so that I could teach them about induction. Wimshurst generators create electricity through this process of induction. Uh, here I have 18 and a half inch acrylic plates and they rotate in opposite direction. And it's that counter that rotation that causes the charge to build up or increases the voltage as the capacitance drops drops off. On either side, these two white jars here, these are my Leyden jars. And uh, in a little bit, I'll go ahead and I'll turn it on and let you see how that works. Uh, and these are just, uh, these are where our charge comes out. And this is our, our spark gap. These are made out of uh, brass. And this is a one-inch turned brass ball. Uh, and then this is a little uh, steel ball that I, I don't know, I had one in the back room someplace and I just put it on the end there. And what it does is it helps to ionize the air around it and cause the positive side to arc better through the air onto my negative terminal. This is just the uh, sphere from a, uh, a Ben and Graf discharge wand. And again, it just helps to uh, increase the target, increase the negative potential, uh, which helps the ion stream a little bit more. Uh, it literally just rained outside, so uh, the atmosphere is really humid, so I don't know what kind of sparks we're going to get. Uh, earlier I was getting uh, sparks anywhere between uh, 8 inches and 6 inches, uh, but right now I'm looking at about 4, so we'll start off there. Uh, down here, I just I mounted a, a motor to it because I'm too lazy to keep turning it all day long for my uh, my students. Here I have a power supply so that I can change the voltage on the motor, change the speed at which the discs rotate, and I can hopefully hope show show that uh, you know it's not the the speed at which it rotates, the discs rotate, don't determine. Uh, how far the spark will go. It just determines how fast it takes to, to load up the lighting jars, uh, the lighting jars. So I'll go ahead and turn it on and we'll see how it goes. So right now I have the uh, laden jars. They're, they're not connected in series and so they're not charging. Uh, right now I'm just having a stream and I don't, probably can't hear it on, on the, that microphone. But uh, what I really just have is a stream of ions flowing out. But there's not enough, there's not enough uh, overall charge in order to create the, the, the gap or jump the gap. So what I'll do is I'll uh, go ahead and dec or connect the uh, lighting jars in series. And now what happens is the uh, lighting jars, because they're connected, one is charged positive and one charged negative. Uh, and then when it gets sufficient enough voltage, because these fill up, as they fill up the voltage increases, and there's enough voltage to jump the short gap, then it jumps from the positive terminal and negative terminal. And hopefully our gas is on the side. Uh, now as it changes the voltage on the motor, it slows the motor down and speeds the motor up. You notice the spark itself doesn't change, but what changes is how fast it arcs, how long it takes to build it up. So the voltage is not set by how fast this rotates. The voltage is set by the actual physical dimensions of the machine. The faster I turn the disk, the faster it generates the current, but it doesn't increase the voltage at all. Now, in the future, besides making it a lot prettier, what I'm going to do is put a hand control so I can change the spark gap while the machine's still running. Uh, right now I have to stop the machine and discharge it because uh, grabbing the spark gap while it's still charged is not a good experience. And, uh, it's not one that I recommend it. So I'll go ahead and kill the lights and we'll see if we can get it to, to pick up on the camera. I don't have any great hope for that. I'm going to go ahead and try night shot mode and see uh, what that does for us. Well, that uh, makes things a little bit more visible as far as the, uh, the terminals go. I don't know how much it does for the, for the spark. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, increase the distance between the spark. 
uh, and take the light and out and see what happens there. It just doesn't want to arc. So breaking the air down too easily so the charge isn't building up. Uh, and that's the cause of the spark to jump across it. Well, here's a shot with the uh, night shot off, and we're just looking at the corona that's coming off the positive terminal on the right side of the screen. You might be able to make out a little bit of the uh, locations where the, the sparks are jumping on onto the, the negative terminal there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think move them a little bit further apart. Maybe we can get a, some interesting, more interesting effects. Well, it looks like this is about the best we're going to do today, so I uh, hope you all enjoyed it, and I uh, hope you get it all pretty and looking the way it should, then uh, I'll make another one. Thanks again. Remember, discharge first.